Well, I'm going to just title this a very simple title. The second video re recorded at the hospital. Uh, the first one, of course, was last night. And they're not going to be at the same time each day because my schedule is weird. I mean, I never know when they're going to call me to do a, an examination or take x-rays or, or do something. And so I have to go with the flow and I have to go when I have the energy. Uh, it's very different uh, working out of the hospital. Uh, I'm in another room. I think this is the, at least the fourth or fifth room that I've been in since Monday, and this is Thursday. So <laughs> it's like a, a different room every day. And I, I think there's been one day that I, uh, there's been days that I've been in two rooms, obviously. Anyway, uh, I am hopefully getting better. Uh, they keep coming up with more diagnoses. Uh, I'm going to have to, uh, as I think I said in the last video, I'm going to have to heal the brain damage before I can do anything with the heart. But I did have to run some tests today uh, on healing the heart. It seems like the... Um, process that I chose uh, 11 to, uh, or 12 to 13 years ago, the process that I thought was the least invasive, ends up being the one that may be the, the worst one of all, and that is the Ross procedure. The Ross procedure, of course, is where they take the aortic valve and remove it and put in its place the, um, what's it called? My mind is still not as sharp as it should be, but they, they replace it with the lower valve uh, and uh, move the lower valve up into the aortic position. But the lower valve isn't made to last as long as the aortic valve. So it has a tendency over time. Now it did last 12, 12 plus years, but it's failing. And I'm going to have to have another open heart surgery apparently in order to repair that and fix it. And I'm not going to be able to choose the Ross procedure. I'm going to have to choose a procedure where, where I use either an artificial valve or else a, an animal donor valve. It's just not going to work with the human donor valve. So I'm having to make a lot of decisions and my family is very, very adamant about me doing what they feel is best, whether it's what I feel is best or not. Although I am going along with them for the most part, uh, because I realize that uh, the things the way they are are not good for me. Uh, there is a failure taking place in the in my internal organs around my heart, my lungs, etc. I do not have apparent actual damage uh, to the heart itself, which I thought was rather interesting. The damage is simply in the valve uh, that they replaced with the uh, Ross procedure. It's not working. It's allowing too much, uh, too much energy, too much blood in at the same time, and that's not a very good thing. There's a lot that I'm learning, a lot that I have to learn, and I still don't have the cognitive skills uh, back in, in enough force to be able to give you as much detail as I will probably in another couple of weeks or so. Uh, I could be in the hospital for another week or two, uh, hopefully not longer than that. There's been suggestions that I might have to go to a different location uh, because there's a, a doctor that specializes in particular retreatments of those that have had Ross procedure, and uh, he's one of the unique doctors in the world, and I don't know. I don't know how that's going to happen. I, you know, financially, it's of great concern to me. Uh, but I'm going to be doing the best that I can and following uh, whatever path is laid out before me. Uh, it's uh, it's laughable in that today I had the uh, what do you call it? I had had it once before when I was. Uh, in my first operation, uh, but it's one where they they go in through the groin and uh, 
and test your car. And I had that today. And yet I don't remember them packing so much stuff on top of the, of the wounds as they did this time. Uh, so that was uh, a bit unique. I almost was told to pull it off. And then my daughter said, wait, dad, you better let me ask first. And she did. And I was told, no, leave that there. That's not ready to come off for tomorrow at the earliest and maybe the following day. So I'm learning a lot about how things work. I'm learning that things that I've trusted in the past, because I thought they were the best solution, uh, may not have been so. So it's a live and learn process, and I'm going with the flow. I'm doing the best I can, and I'm going to have very short videos for you uh, until such time as I'm starting to feel uh, more comfortable. Maybe not until such time as I actually am able to move uh, away from the hospital altogether and back into my own environment. And then I have to relearn how to do the videos again because I've had to relearn how to do it just uh, just using the uh, internet service uh, for the hospital, which is totally different than my own internet service. Similar, but very different. So there's a lot of learning curves that have to be taken place. And I appreciate, once again, all the prayers and love and support that you're sending me. No, I'm not, I'm not even attempting to read all the volumes and volumes of emails that are coming my way. I simply don't have the time or the energy. But I do appreciate those of you that are taking time to not only write to me, but especially to pray. God will work out the highest and best for not just me, but for the whole human race, and that we will be able to transcend the system that we've known for so long and create a system together that works for all of us and doesn't leave people behind. So that's all I'm going to say. And once again, I thank you for listening, and I say namaste as I always do. Bye-bye.